This is what I like about this whole process is this opportunity to show these two services together. This was Anne Gould Hallberg's set. Annie was very much a person that liked to use the art. She was hoping to use it every day. And this is what I enjoy about seeing this set is that it was used. And you're going to see little flaws if you have a scratch or if something happens to it, it falls, you can take it out. You can remove it. Uh, and uh, uh, all these tools that you see over here are used to either in the process of making it from the beginning, but also in if something happens to it, you know, how you can repair it. Uh, like this tool right here, this is what is called a burnisher. And uh, basic is very smooth, sort of almost a spoon shape there. But if you would get a scratch in the side of this, you, all you have to do is put a stake underneath here and take this tool and, and by stroking it and pushing it in the same direction, sterling silver is soft enough that you can push the material right into the scratch and almost make it disappear. So if we go from here, you're talking about removing scratches, removing dents, but you like some of the evidence of use in the set that was used. So in terms of the long-term care in the museum, we wouldn't buff out any of those scratches? We would leave some of that evidence of use? I, to me, it, it's, it's one of those decisions that you have to make because sometimes when something has too much of a statement left because of a damage, what you're doing is you're taking away from the piece itself. So to repair it, yes. Uh, but a lot of us metalsmiths, uh, we're so fussy, you know, and the whole idea of taking and getting it down to completely clean. This is why, in a lot of ways, I really enjoy the whole idea of doing things myself by hand. Just like in this piece, I'm just raising this, it hasn't been polished. But as you can see in the light, there's these very subtle undulations that are left because of the planishing hammer. If you came across here with a a buff that was very hard, okay, you would just wisp all that off. This is why this is so great to get this information from you because we try so hard to keep your original intent and then not in any way interfere with your original marks. So in terms of getting out a scratch, there's a balance between rubbing it, I think, and then we possibly would be able in some of the smoother pieces to rub something out. If there's a dent in it, or a mar, if I were to do a little planishing, that would then be my mark instead of your mark. I don't have a problem with that. I'm more concerned with the piece. If that mark is really taking away from the design, you're welcome to take it out. <laughs> and I, I, I applaud that. Well, and it's really tricky with museums to try and figure out that middle ground where it's displayed as the artist wants and then cared for the, in the longest term because even if you just rub your hand over a surface every day for a year, something's gonna happen. So that's why some people have worked into do you coat the silver, do you not, but then that has a visual effect. This whole idea of hand polishing more with a cloth, mm -hmm. what happens is you actually build up another transparency. There's actually another molecule that starts to develop as you work it. Now, if you take with the polish, you'll strip that off. Now, if you hand polish and only hand polish, you'll build this extra transparency. These are polishing gloves. Now, they're a little nasty looking right now because they've been used, but basically, you spray some polish on here and rub the two of them together, and you're able to handle the piece. And not only is it protecting and leaving the surface nice, but it's polishing at the same time. So this has a different finish on it. Yes, it does. That was, again, a design decision. I wanted to have a difference between the pieces that were floating on top of here and then the action underneath with the carved acrylic. I noticed that this is stamped sterling. However, you have a different alloy 
here? This is a combination of sterling silver and germanium. There's 925 of silver, 75 of germanium. Germanium was brought into play mainly with the idea of trying to come up with a sterling that would not have to be polished. It still does to a degree. And it doesn't have quite the warmth that is in the other sterling. Now the other sterling is 925 silver to 75 copper. You can see the difference between, even when I put this on here, you see the difference between the two. So this is the same ratio, it's just switching yeah, the two metals. That's exactly, and that's why it can be called sterling in both cases. Light makes the whole thing happen, and what you're doing here is putting a floor that's sort of a semi-matte, and then up on the top, I'm really going to the reflections and the light. And that was part of the thought behind the acrylic too, or is that a totally different? Well, the acrylic, I've worked with the acrylic for quite a while. Uh, you can do this with glass, but I, I really found that I like the acrylic because I enjoy the being able to work it myself. But this acrylic is kind of special. It was designed for the university on a research grant, and it does have properties. I don't know exactly what they are, but it is something that will last and has that same transparency that glass does, but then again, you don't have to worry about chipping an edge. And so this is designed to yellow less slowly than a typical acrylic? Was that part of their I research? I don't know if that's, uh, that's going to yellow. Uh, I, I might be dust by the time that goes yellow. <laughs> I hope, because I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Your connection points here, is that a mechanical connection or do you use adhesives? How are these? No, each, each one of those also has a pin in them. I epoxy so that the fit is going to be just perfect. But it's, it's very tight anyway when I, when I fit it. But as time goes on, wood always shrinks. And so the epoxy helps keep the air out of there. But the pin uh, makes it so that definitely it's never, never going to come out of there. With you have chosen rosewood. Rosewood, depending on where it comes from, it can be more of a rich darkness like that. Now this piece has been definitely cleaned and, and it's been bleached out. Uh, it was definitely more of a color like that. And should we finish and possibly give it a little stain to make it appear like this again? Or is this, it's been used, this is what's happened to wood? I really like what's happening to the top of that tray right there. It, it has a, you know, it basically a modeling that has appeared because of time. Just like my gray hair, I don't mind it. Sometimes it makes me look distinguished. That's what I'm trying to do here, and most museums across the country are trying to do. It's just invaluable to be able to talk to the artist and get from you it's okay if the surface is slightly scratched or no, it really needs to be a mirror surface and then knowing the material you use then can help educate how we treat it. I just feel that collaboration is nothing but good. Yes. <laughs> nothing but good.